Hello, everybody. Uh, I am Julia LaFond, and I will be the keeper for t today's session of Apocalypse Keys, which is the fourth session in our four session long Apocalypse Keys mini campaign for Nerds with Dice. Uh, and for those unfamiliar, maybe start with the first video, but also Apocalypse Keys is a system where players are powerful monsters trying to prevent the end of the world, but they also have to struggle to not become harbingers of the apocalypse themselves. Uh, and so... Before we jump into a recap, uh, I would like to go ahead and let the players introduce themselves. Sid, like do you to want start? to start? Oh. Who would you like to start with? Uh, I guess it's you, Sin. Oh. Sorry. Yeah. Hi, I'm Synthetic. You can call me Sen. Uh, I'm a Chancellor here on Nerds with Dice, and today I am playing D, who may or may not be a supernova waiting to explode in a metaphorical sense, uh, and used to be Death. Now has the Grim Reaper Scythe, and nothing can go wrong with that. Uh, both myself and D use they them pronouns, and D is the shade playbook. I think I should probably follow that up, considering something you said. Uh, <laughs> hi, <laughs> I'm Keldry. Uh, I uh, am playing M3 or Tuttle. Uh, your friendly neighborhood wishing star of the apocalypse, uh, who is in fact a supernova waiting to happen in the literal sense. Um, I and Tuttle both use AM pronouns, uh, and yeah, pass the baton to whoever wants to grab it. Hi, okay. <laughs> Hi guys, uh, my name is Alice. I use she they pronouns. Uh, tonight I am playing your heel or York. Uh, they are the fallen. Um, that's definitely been dealing with their own unique set of problems, including befriending a library of sorts. Uh, York uses they them pronouns, and that is going to leave us with clown. We will not be interrupted this time. I keep forgetting to say I'm playing the Surge, but there we go. Addendum. Okay. Oh, uh, and then before we jump into the recap, I do want to say, in case it was not already clear, uh, this is a horror game. So we do have some content warnings. Uh, right now, we're continuing the Parasitic Library module. The content warnings for that are memory loss. Before this, we played the module The First Door, so some of the content warnings for that may come into play. Uh, and those content warnings were body horror, cruel experimentation, cult behavior, and evidence of mental illness from trauma. That said, we also did some safety ground tools all the way back in session zero. So some themes, stories, and ideas we will not see at all in the game are harm to animals, harm to children, cannibalism, clowns with the exception of our player clown, uh, 
ex explicit sex in particular, homophobia, religious discrimination, racism, transphobia, sexism, real world analogs to such discrimination, slurs, cancer, active genocide, self-harm, sexual assault, terrorism, and torture. Uh, themes and stories we will see less of, so these are things that potentially will be glossed over if they come up or are only okay in backstories, or only apply to specific players, which we discussed as a group. Uh, but these are bugs, eyeballs, gore, spiders, eating disorders, heroic suicide, sudden character death, and permanent harm to, uh, to PCs. To PCs. Uh, and I would like to check in with everyone. Uh, are there any, is there anything we need to add to either of those categories? Any questions, any revisions we need to make before proceeding with today's session? I'm all no. set. All right, cool. Um, let's see. And I know in the past, under the theme stories and ideas, we're excited to explore uh, deepening personal bonds, getting into characters, body horror, and chances for ruin and mayhem. Still accurate? Anything else? Very accurate. I still smile very widely when you say chances for ruin and mayhem so i'm pretty sure that's still accurate yeah okay. uh, considering considering the end of last session yes uh, uh all right well with that it sounds like it's recap time uh on this current mission our team of omen class monsters was summoned not to any faraway location, but to one of Division's many basements, <laughs> um, where an, an entity known as the Parasitic Library had latched onto their records room. The Parasitic Library is an extra-dimensional being that siphons away records and knowledge and information, but if you go into the library and retrieve stuff inside it, you get to keep the information. And uh, as you might imagine, there is all sorts of dangerous information and also occasionally things and people in the library. Uh, so far, the group has encountered the librarian, the something of an anthrop anthropomorphic manifestation of the library itself that has interacted with them uh they oh yeah they also came in here with uh marcus finch archival assistant of division be they pronouns uh who basically so far has just stayed by the front door doing research stuff and is on the radio did call them a little worried when some explosion stuff happened, but you know. <laughs> uh, totally not my fault. The group has been investigating what Harbinger potentially brought the parasitic library to Division. And they did discover some sort of ritual circle that was binding the library to Division. That has been broken, so it is now possible to get the library away from Division if they can figure out a method for that. Um, and they also encountered uh, the child version of a Harbinger they defeated. Did I mention said Harbinger has time travel powers? Yeah, anyway, they successfully got that child back to safety slash their own timeline, so I'm sure that's not gonna cause any issues down the line. Um, and there have also been some intriguing clues, or keys, as they're called in the game, uncovered. There's a lantern that casts sentient shadows that reenacts secrets. And one is that D has been to the library before and took something from it, though they don't remember this. 
Uh, we also have found out the Harbinger, whoever they are, does not know that they are a Harbinger. They forgot. Uh, there was a file of past Harbingers that somebody abandoned in a hurry. But the pages were blank, though, though a certain potential supernova may have gotten a glimpse of somebody familiar. <laughs> Uh, oh, there was also a red phone that rang, and it was D taunting themselves, or someone taunting D in D's voice, or possibly a different version of D, to the tune of It's the End of the World as We Know It and I Feel Fine by R.E.M. There was detritus from a different star that had come to Earth, which is how the group realized you need part of a star to open the door of power that is within the library. There is a small journal that's still being written in that presumably belongs to either the Harbinger or somebody who was talking about the Harbinger, but it's in code. And, and you know, the group discovered this because um, York the Fallen... Basically, the the library now worships York and at their behest gave the group all the information it, it had on the Harbinger, <laughs> which incidentally also included a scroll from an ancient civilization division had erased from time that warned of the veil between life and death being torn of time being unwound, and of old foes arising, and in one of the illustrations was somebody wielding the Reaper's Scythe. Which brings us more or less to the present, but I do want to check in. Who all has moves that need to be taken care of at the beginning of a session? <laughs> I know I do. Uh, but if Tuttle would like to choose the hands around your heart on camera, you could do that first if you like. Oh, um, the uh, we'll we'll just say that January fifth is Tuttle's heart this episode. Fair enough. We'll find out what that means later. Maybe. Who knows. Um, I do have an ability called Death's Advocate that happens on at the start of each session. I am going to spend three darkness tokens, and I don't remember if I had these when I last played, but I have these lovely D6s that the pips are skulls now, which seems very appropriate to D. I will spend three darkness tokens, which puts me at zero. And I will get an eight. Oh, an eight. I believe that is a perfect hit. Yes. On that flashback to a moment when your mentor was pleased with you, their sinister, sinister riddles make sense of what is going on in the present. Um, first of all, I, I think I'm going to take a bond with what the darkness demands of me. Okay. Uh, and that brings me up to four bonds with what the darkness demands of me. <laughs> Um, sure, that won't come to play at all. And then I'm going to say they taught you the cruel patterns of the apocalypse. Declare an irrevocable truth about the mystery. Rewrite or add a facet of the mystery that reflects this truth. Okay. And... Who did you say that the journal was written by? Um, so we had been leaving that open because I didn't 
want to close off who the harbinger was fair, until fair. the group unlocked Tomb's door. But that, if you wanted to say who the harbinger is, that would be potentially an example of an irreversible truth. No, no. Okay. I, I think I want to tie the ringing phone to the identity of who brought the library to Division. I think that D has forgotten this, but they brought the library to Division at the behest of their mentor, who was very pleased with that step in them becoming a future harbinger. And speaking oh. of future harbingers, I have my cat here with me. Oh, <laughs> it's a kitty. Oh, gosh, it's a kitty. Oh, it's a cryptid, aren't mm -hmm. you? Um, uh, <clears throat> right. Offended by that. Okay. Yeah. So let's go ahead and add a note here. He was the one who brought. Oh, so actually, no, you would be modifying an existing facet, the one of the identity of who brought the library to Division now becomes Dee brought the library stuff. to Division. I have no idea what that's going to mean, but it sounded fun when I said it. Well, it certainly did. <laughs> Um, absolutely none. Right. And that does remind me of two other things. So two of you are also supposed to be on the lookout for books in this library, if I recall correctly. D, you're supposed to be looking for stuff about the former Grim Reaper who went missing at some point. And Tuttle, I believe, was tasked with finding a book for for a certain friend of theirs who currently is going by Sybil. <laughs> who I didn't know was a harbinger until we got into the library. I mean, do you do you know Sybil is a harbinger? That is actually a good question. Um. Oh yeah, because you got a glimpse. Yeah. <laughs> so no. So well, that's the interesting thing is, um, if I'm remembering correctly, the parasitic library erases what it takes. Um, mm -hmm. and we found that binder where York, D, and Tuttle, um, all had harbingers that. Uh, they defeated slash contained and uh, the pages got smudged out, but uh, Tuttle got a glimpse of Sybil or someone who looks suspiciously like Sybil on one of the pages and it said contained, if I remember correctly. So yeah. possibly... All right. And with that, I believe it's time to start shifting back into the present. So if I recall correctly, York, Tuttle, and D were all together. And then um, I believe January 5th was having to complete some onboarding training and paperwork before Division gave the go-ahead to go in library and join up with the other Omen class monsters. So it seems like that's about when January 5th finished up, unless they were up to something else. I mean, that is that is also a possibility. May I present a possibility? The cookies weren't done yet. 
that's it. <laughs> you didn't have someone who could flash cook them at like 3000 degrees Kelvin. Uh, uh, speaking of which, <laughs> uh, Keltry, you were saying something? I was going to ask, is January just following the path of uh, mass destruction? <laughs> be perfectly honest that sounds well within january skill set <laughs> yeah i was gonna say <laughs> uh... hi i brought cookies <laughs> uh... no I want to be clear before I say this. D is going to say this. D feels this. Sin does not because it's mean what I'm about to say. If somebody would have listened to me, we'd be out of here by now. Uh, Tal is looking between York and D. And Sin is like, I needed darkness tokens back, bestie. I don't functional might be an overstatement. <laughs> um so so if I recall correctly, the lights in this area are still out, but if you look around, there are definitely some signs of destruction of like exploded bookcases, a couple chunks falling out of the ceiling. I am the only I am the only light source in this room right now. This section isn't collapsed. Let's just put it that way. As loath as I am to agree with January, it is progress. Because your cheery
And at that moment, Dee looks down and remembers feeling the power of the scythe coursing through them. Uh, yes, I do have things to do. And being realistic, if we don't hurry up and get moving, we are liable at disappearing with the library when it's time to disconnect it. Actually, that reminds me. Um, York, can I ask you for a favor? I mean, you can certainly ask me, but if there's nothing in it for me, there's no guarantee. Um, I, I will definitely say you could ask me for most anything in return. Um, I'm looking for a book and I'm worried it may have something to do with the library, or maybe the seal that we saw earlier. Um, it's a powerful spell book, and since the library seems to like you for now, um, I was wondering if you could help me find it. Well, I don't work on favors, so if you have something of equal value, we can talk about it. Otherwise, until you find that point, I feel like this is a conversation that doesn't need to be had. Uh, oh, boy. If Tuttle's looking for a book, it's not for a good reason. At least not to me. And until I have something that makes it a good reason, I'm not going to involve myself in that. Uh, what if a possible Harbinger was also looking for said book? I feel like that's a reason for it to stay lost. Lost in such a way that they might be able to find it? Uh, we don't know if we don't know who brought the library to division. Um, we are worried that a harbinger is using the library. And yes, it's possible a harbinger brought the library to division, but we're trying to figure that out. Um, If they're asking Tuttle for it, it means that they can't find it on their own. Just because they are cashing checks, I think as the humans put it, that they do not have the money for, that doesn't mean I have to do the same. I don't know what they want it for. And I don't know that I want them to get it at this point, but... Tuttle. You have enumerated several reasons for York not to trust you in this. Okay, specifically, I don't need to carry the book, nor do I need to give it to, well, I don't need to give it to them. I'm not sure what the consequences of that are going to be, but I'll deal with that when, when that happens. Um, my point was, if we're dealing with a sigil and someone who brought the library here and sealed it to division, a powerful spellbook sounds like a way to do that? 
if I may. What if this harbinger wants you to get a hold of this book so that one of us takes possession of it? Wait, why would... I'm confused. That, Tuttle, is why we don't put you at the negotiating table. You do wonderful things. I mean that genuinely. But bargaining is not one of them. It wasn't a bargain. It was a promise. Even worse. But I'm not going to involve myself in something ridiculous at best and dangerous at worst without something to actually show for it. You figured that out? We'll talk. If not, it's not my responsibility. You're the one who made that promise. That's not something I am capable of. Okay. We can deal with that in a bit. And like I said, I don't want to return it to them at this point. Now that I know who they are, I didn't know they were possibly a harbinger. Um, Tuttle. If you made a promise to them not knowing who they are, does that not make the pact false in the first place? Just think about it. Yeah, it's not sealed to division anymore. We have to make sure that the Harbinger is sealed before the library drifts. If it does, it hasn't been forthcoming to my knowledge. I think it might have been a little too forthcoming. Looks at the piles of books on the floor. Yeah, the, the, the six foot deep pile of books. Where we are standing in a circle of not piles of books because of the shield. I think the kids call it an info dump. I really want to know what kids you're talking about there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trillions of years old, okay? Kids fair. is a relative term. Fair, fair. Fair, uh, well, valid, While we are hurt. slightly off topic, uh, I think January 5th definitely gets to roll reveal your heart. I'm just trying to decide. <laughs> yeah, you, because you definitely were reaching out to everybody. <laughs> during this conversation so i'm gonna say roll reveal your heart and then if anyone if it's a success anyone can try to reciprocate based on that if they want i went as far as i think d would <laughs> let themselves <laughs> Uh, I'm taking uh, I'm taking four darkness tokens off of that conversation with uh, York. Um, 
I feel like, like I said, I feel like every single time I go for Reveal Your Heart, I just get burned horribly. I feel like I did about the coldest, most logical thing I could do in that conversation, so. <laughs> uh, All right. All right. Uh, so would you like to spend a mod to modify that, or do you think a disastrous success is appropriate here? All right. So. You can pick one person if you want, so. Um, the fact that you could bring up the Harbinger without actually having me say specifically in front of you what or who that was. Oh, okay. Despite being a walking possible supernova, um, ha aside from that, how do I scare you? I am looking for, that's power through darkness, that's... Un oh, yes. Yeah. so here, I can read it off. So the two options are, tell them how fearful you have become of them on a scale from zero to four, that becomes the number of darkness tokens they now have, or bond with what the darkness demands of you. Uh, I think considering the, I'm going to gain a bond with what the darkness demands. All your eighty then. Uh. 
Mm. Yes. <laughs> oh, great. I've never sleeped to dream myself. I don't. Oh, all right. I'm going to try to uh, slip in behind January. Oh, would you like to spend a bond to turn that into a success? If you have a bond with Tuttle, you would be able to use that bond without losing, without any losing it. We did originally have a bond. Um, <laughs> okay. There is a section for it in the character sheet. Oh, okay. Yep. Fair. Yep. All right. Just wait, what's this? Yes, you can use the bond and then immediately gain another one. Yeah. Amazing what the, the difference a little company can make. Um, thank you. I have no idea what I just did. I have no idea what I just did. The Tuttle story. <laughs> mm. Since Tuttle is on, in the habit of lending power, I think it's just Tuttle maybe lent you a little bit more of the reality bending power that A have access to.
Okay. Um, there are a couple things that I would like to go over here. One is I would like to ask, so right now you have six keys and this is a complexity for mystery. So if you tried to unlock Doom's door, it would be with a plus two bonus. Are you as a group looking to do that after after uh, getting some reconnaissance on and bringing the Harbinger closer? I, I was hoping we might do at least one more move because I do have something in mind. Okay, one more. Uh, and I, do you have a ruin advance? Huh? Okay. As a reminder, I do have a rune advance. That is the other thing I was going to mention. Yeah, so you're sticking your head into a literal shifting full of dreams and nightmares. Uh, and you you did get, do that rune advance based on the end of session questions last time. This would be a very good time if you wanted to take a moment to narrate. <laughs> That's also, lovely. that happens. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I will say then that you get a glimpse of the room that the Harbinger was in. Um, and you can feel it shifting closer in reality. You can hear scraping sounds and rustling pages. Um, and the glimpse that you get is of a cramped boiler room full of pipes that uh, intertwine and spread out in ways that defy the confines of three-dimensional geometry. Um, and it almost seems like there's... The Harbinger is trying to listen to the steam coming out of the boiler, but... <sighs> Meanwhile, what is Tuttle seeing? I don't know that Tuttle is particularly seeing anything aside from the trees and the snow and because Tuttle's dreams might be at this point slightly incomprehensible to M solely because I don't think they dream the same way now that they did um and i think it's more that flash of when tuttle lends that power to bend reality instead of Tuttle doing that, it's a flashback to the sphere encasing what looks like. It's a flashback to that moment earlier when Tuttle turned into a harbinger and kind of broke reality the first time where it's a completely dark humanoid shape with wings for ears and forearms and uh, a solar flares except pitch black inside of a white sphere that is approximately the same shape as the sphere everybody is currently or was currently would have been standing in because Tuttle shielded the group so it fits perfectly 
No library books were harmed in the making of this temporary harbinger. You realize I have enough power to outburn the universe, right? Tuttle is going to quietly gnome on the milk and cookies. <laughs> and everyone else, if you're looking, the library floor looks just as if nothing happened. There is, while they were doing that, something that I would like to do, if that's okay. That is acceptable. D is going to, while they're looking into this, look over to York and say, just so you know, I think I'm leaving after this case. I know I don't work well with others. And I think it's about time that I do my own thing for a while. Well, I can't say I blame you. I don't particularly work well with people myself, as this whole team thing shows. So maybe we all had our own ways. If any of this is left standing, of course. Something tells me that this particular team is not going to be easy to not leave standing. Well, at the end of it, Division might not be the one left standing, so... Might be better for everybody involved. Quite possibly, though... I think the other two are just a little too naive to be on their own, so... <laughs> I think January is less naive than they let on. There is a choice between choosing to appear naive and optimistic and being such. Well, until I have proof for the other. I'm just saying what I experienced when you got pulled out last time. Either way, I figured you'd be happy to know that I'd be on my way. Again, I think we'd all be much happier on our own way. Fair point. Now, this was an attempt at Reveal Your Heart. <laughs> I was gonna, I suspect it is much good to have confirmation. <laughs> Go ahead and make your roll. I'm gonna use... Yeah, yeah. Just like when a co-worker lets you know they're putting in their two-week notice. It's... Yeah, basically. <laughs> we both hate this job. Mm -hmm. We can commiserate over that. Uh, I'm going to spend two darkness tokens. All right. And that is a seven. 
I think it's appropriate to spend a bond with what the darkness demands to make that a success. All right. Uh, you know what? Given the circumstances for you thinking you're going to be leaving, that, yeah. So, on an 8 to 10, what are you going to choose here? Uh, I think I'm going to clear the lonely condition. And, uh, York will get to choose one, too. Yeah, so if York wants to choose to deepen the connection, you can choose to gain a bond with Z, to clear a condition, to mark XP, or to clear one ruin. I am actually going to mark XP because Z did teach me that they're leaving soon. Yeah. And sinking ships and all that. And all that. I'm not crying. You're crying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad someone's crying for these two. Yeah, that puts me at seven for an advance, so. So close. So close. All right. So, uh, you two had a little heart-to-heart -heart while the other two were poking their head into the dark forest. Now... If you ever refer to myself as such with reference to anyone else again, I will make sure that you never die and regret the words forevermore. That look hurt. Ah. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, please don't. Actually, that would be very awkward. Um... <laughs> Tuttle is just looking over at January 5th going, you don't, that's, that was a bad thing. <laughs> Meanwhile, Total is just going, I'm not a harbinger, I'm not a harbinger, I'm not a harbinger. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, if we are moving toward the harbinger, there is one thing that I would like to do beforehand just to make sure that I use all of my moves at least once in the series. <laughs> I think I would like to call upon do Harbinger's dream of monsters like me. Oh yes, that move. <laughs> in pursuit of the Harbinger, I feel like the bloodlust of the scythe is awakening and remembering the details of Harbinger's past. 
and it's with that in mind that I would like to make that roll. All right. Uh, spending two darkness tokens. Putting myself back at zero, which means D's got to be a jerk again eventually. <laughs> Definitely not. Uh, especially when that is a 12. Oh. What so, happens? And I'm guessing you're not spending bonds to reduce that to a normal success. <laughs> I don't think so. Mm. Doesn't feel like it would make sense in this instance. Uh, I will say the one that I'm choosing from the 8 to 10, because I get one from the 8 to 10 and one from the 11 plus, uh, I would like to uncover a key at a great cost. And... Uh, I think I'll go ahead and mark one ruin to allow the Harbinger to sustain itself on me and force it to slumber again, where I give it a portion of my essence. Hmm. And that does put me at five ruin. Mm-hmm. Well... As discussed, you wanted to save that for the epilogue, so we Correct. can do that. <laughs> oh, but uncovering a key at great cost while also forcing the fragment of this harbinger back into dormancy. What key? What cost? I do think at least something that would be appropriate could be activating D's vicious condition. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that is what's going to happen. That's going to be the cost is you you now are vicious as the reaper's side take greater gets a more of a foothold in your mind and makes me want to slay the Harbinger rather than just deal with it. And I think that given the circumstances, the key is going to be a memory split into two surfaces in a PC's mind, one true and one false. I am going to type that up and put that on roll 20 before I forget. Great. Okay. So, D. As this harbinger's knowledge floods into your mind, it does so... It also entangles with the power of the library, and instead of the simple knowledge that you were expecting, you find yourself torn between two memories. One memory is true. It is the memory of you first entrusting the scythe to the Grim Reaper who went missing. The other side of this memory is false as you remember that the task you gave the Grim Reaper was to wipe out humanity. 
am I aware of the true and falseness of the two memories? You are aware, but it is nevertheless disorienting. I think because of the nature of that memory, D rarely has strong thoughts. But I think in that moment, just the images of the memory would become aware to January. So January, I would like to offer you a little tidbit that D is maybe not picking up on here because of how disorienting this experience is. You have a little bit more separation. So there is something about the true memory that stands out to you as potentially significant. I mean, maybe it's a coincidence, maybe it's significant that the name of this human who got promoted to Grim Reaper so long ago was Michael. Reminding myself, because, you know, it's been a while. Yeah. Michael, was that the name of Mr. Knock? That was part so, of Mr. Knock, yes. Yeah, so Mr. Knock was composed of Bella, a, a woman who had some time travel powers, and Michael. The, the shadowy monster under her bed, as far as anyone knew. <laughs> he is in the dark forest right now. With Bella. With mm -hmm. Bella. And Mr. Knock, as a whole, is marked for death in such a way that, uh, as far as you're aware, if Michael were to just simply try to leave the dark forest, assuming he could, he would die! <laughs> Well then. I think we call that an oopsie. <laughs> I think Dean might call that a job well done. All right. Checking in. You now have seven keys, so that would give you a plus three bonus to unlocking Doom's door. And it sounds like you as a group are heading off to where the Harbinger now is close by. Are you ready to attempt to unlock Doom's door? I am so ready to attempt to unlock Doom's door because I just got cookies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. So, would you like to brainstorm a theory, or is there one person who would like to advance a theory and have the others comment on it? Last time I tried advancing a theory, that didn't go well, so... To be fair, the dice betrayed you. I have a very oversimplified theory, and it's too easy. So if uh, Alice or Clown have a better one, uh, please go. I mean, this is a pretty complex one by comparison, 
we could go around and like have each person do a connection and then have somebody do the role. Honestly, Keldry, I, I am curious to hear what your simple theory is. Um, the Harbinger is the uh, leftover contained Sybil. Um, the door is, uh, the door is the last, uh, shattered bit of, uh, part of York's crown that Tuttle broke when they fell. Um, and the, since it was a mildly, I don't know, interdimensional fall, that's how it ended up in the library. Um, and, uh, D bringing the library to division is because D used to know what was in the library. Uh, could I add something for my own edification? Yeah, this was just me spitballing. <laughs> uh, the small journal still being written in, I'd like to connect that to the secrets locked within the library. Because this is the Library of Alexandria, right? Like, that was what we described. In, kind of. in part. <laughs> Consume the Library of Alexandria, at least. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, I assume that the small journal being written in and the secrets locked within the library is showing us that all written words end up in the library. And that's just because I think that idea is neat. Something, something monkey with a typewriter. Yep. <laughs> I think that works. <laughs> there. All right. Who wants to roll the cursed dice that have always failed us up to this point? All right. Uh, when it comes to first double check that every key is connected to a facet. Oh. We don't have to draw it because that would be a lot of lines, but I do just want to double check. That sounds like an amazing idea. Let's go ahead. All right, so this is not wanting to let me. All right, let's, wow. Okay, you know what? Let me just try drawing. Here, okay, I can... so there is. I okay, have I right have access that. to oh, I have access to different colors. Hold on. Um, can I can I connect the scroll from division um, scroll from a civilization division erased from time to the secrets locked within the library, as that makes sense as yes. part of the Library of Alexandria. Yes, that makes sense. And I think. The ringing phone taunting D in their own voice makes sense as a part of D brought the library to division 
Yeah. Similar thing with the split memory. Uh, which was the split memory? There it is. Similar thing with the split memory. Okay. And it sounded like the file of past harbingers was connected to the harbinger. Yeah. So. That's me, okay? You can, I... you can clear him away if this turns out to be an incorrect theory. <laughs> also, I do remember the two, uh, I do remember the two lines that are irrevocable truths. Yeah. The lanterns and uh, the star uh, are the two irrevocable, irrevocable truths. All right. Mm -hmm. I didn't do it. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. So this is only modified by two, am I right? By three. Three. By three. Oh, it's okay. Plus three. Um, and you can't use. I can't bonds. use bonds or anything to modify it. Yeah, that I remember. That's a disastrous success. Yay! So technically, so technically, right? All right. So. What you described is more or less going to be the case. However, you're going to reach the door moments after the Harbinger has unlocked it. Um, I would like to say that as you head to the spoiler room, though, there is, there is a little scene you're going to pass on the way. There is going to be, you're going to see the librarian waving at York and holding up a little banner with a heart on it in front of a bunch of shelves that have been rearranged into the shape of a heart. And on the shelves are all of York's favorite things they've ever read. We all obtain worshippers one way or another. This is one more. <laughs> oh. Right. And before we switch from that to the Harbinger, I think this is a good time for a quick break. <gasps> yeah. Fair enough. We will be right back. Welcome back to Apocalypse Keys, and that is a very cute kitty. Uh, <clears throat> right, anyway. Uh, that the audience can't see, for the record. Oh, oh, wait, so they, they're they not going to see the cat? No. Oh! It's fine. All right, well, um, sorry about that. The, that was some player-only content right there. 
Alrighty then. So, all of you make your way through the library, through the shelves, past the library's display of affection for York. Uh, and the floor turns to metal as you enter the boiler room. There are pipes that come through the walls into the ceilings and interlock with yourself. There's barely enough room for all of you to get further in as you approach the furnace where Sybil is. Um, and Sybil has the crown or what's left of York's crown. She also is holding a certain book that Tuttle was supposed to be on the lookout for. Uh, and there is a different spell circle etched onto this floor. One that is much cleaner and prettier and with gold ink um that if you listen closely some of some of the words inscribed on it seem to be what the furnace is whispering as steam comes out of it um also tuttle as soon as you step into the room, you feel something on a visceral level. This ritual needed at least part of a star for, to complete. And you are a star. This ritual has already begun siphoning power from you. <laughs> you um, know, I kind of forgot about that. Um, <laughs> I... Tuttle is going to look at York and be like, please just don't say I told you so. Please. <laughs> I would like to immediately call on the corridor of doors. Okay. Because I have a specific harbinger that is too perfect for this. Oh? The door of the twin moons of gravity and stars of darkness and void. I would like to reverse the energy that is being sucked out of Tuttle and send it back into them. Okay. So I'm guessing you're doing the spend to ruin option on yes. this. Yes. Okay. So you can summon this Harbinger. However, I think you are going to need to roll power through darkness to see if this goes the way you're thinking it will. <laughs> that makes perfect sense. Um, question. Do I... I'm only asking this because it's important to the number of darkness tokens I have. Yeah. Am I embodying viciousness by summoning forth this without speaking? If you think it's vicious, I think it's vicious. Fair. Uh, then I will get and spend two darkness tokens for that power through darkness. And the Doppler effect? Okay. <laughs> so, I have an 11. I oh. do have a bond with Tuttle, though. So, I would like to use that yeah. bond to reduce by one. Yeah. And retain it. Okay. So, the good news is um... Actually, so Power Through Darkness, you get to choose two from the list. 
So I'm guessing get what you want is going to be the one to accomplish this energy redirection. Yeah. What's the other one going to be? Um... Sorry, I was looking at the power through darkness and it has... I thought I said unleash the dark. Oh, unleash the dark. You are correct. Uh, let's say... Get what you want and... Avoid reprisals, harm, or cost. Okay, that is probably a very good decision here. Um, because you summoned the exact right harbinger for this situation. So for now, Tuttle is effectively being protected. Uh, Sybil is, you're going to notice her lips thin a little bit as she's looking at you. Um, but what she's going to say is, well, I know one of you, but, uh, would the rest of you like to introduce yourselves? I'm Sybil, today. Ooh, how interesting she says out loud and her surface thoughts are crap 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 <laughs> technically it was only good things until i don't know like an hour ago Dreams. No, I don't think that's the medium I was using. No, it wasn't dreams. Okay. It was letters, by the way. Uh, and then she's going to cast her gaze on York. Uh, oh, you're not here for this old thing, are you? <laughs> As she clutches the broken remnants of what was once your crown tighter. I mean, regaining that's a nice side effect of tossing you back into whatever void you came from. Technically, we are here on a job. Uh, and then she's like, oh, there we go. <laughs> um, mentally, out loud, she's going to say, oh, right, yeah, this library, very useful, but not so nice once it gets stuck in your library. You know, uh, you could, uh, you might want to go take care of that, and I'll just stay out of your way. Uh, if I can, I can give you some directions and a little hint. Uh, and she kind of holds the spell book up a little, uh, of how you could get the library to leave whatever knowledge it's sucking up that you don't want taken from you. <laughs> There's only one thing I want back, and you can't help with that. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, really? Oh, and she holds up, she's still holding up the book now, me. you see it? Uh, and she tosses it behind her head, and nothing comes out, and she holds up both hands, now you don't. Uh, right, I forgot about that. Why 
are you doing this? Well, it's simple. I told you. I made a wish to have someone very special in my life. Uh, and while you are a very special person, and I'm glad I met you, you weren't the person I had in mind when I made my wish. And there are not a lot of ways to bring someone back from the dead. It's almost like you don't always get what you want. Yeah, I'm... she's going to smile at you. No, I don't always get what I want. But if I work very hard, maybe I'll get what I need. I'm marking darkness tokens for that. Um, it's like you wanted... You were hoping I'd bring someone back? Well... I, when I made that wish, I, I didn't know it was possible. Just, I was wishing on a star. But then when you came back, so did some of the memories Division locked away in this place. And I remembered there are ways to get someone back if you're stubborn enough. <gasps> Well, like I said, I am Tuttle. I wasn't lying. You are, I am very glad to have met you. Uh, and I do, would like to keep you in my life. It's just, I lost someone very important to me and I would also like them to be in my life. <laughs> And, you know, if this works, I think it's possible that a lot of people will have people they lost back in their lives. I suppose it depends on your perspective. I think your perspective is about to be six feet under. Hmm. No. <laughs> no. Please, please return that to York. Sybil uh, is going to look fairly apprehensive. You're asking me to give up the best, safest way I have to be reunited with the love of my life. I would 
And if you're not going to do this the relatively easy way, I mean, there's other ways of reuniting. Uh, hmm. Hermes She's... just grows in size from the little corgi into the big giant black dog. So she's going to look at all four of you and what she is going to say is well the thing is I trust Tuttle but I'm not sure I trust the rest of you Tuttle I if you think it's for the best I will give you this and she holds up the crown with my apologies for not being more honest from the start but I want you to promise that you won't let anyone else use it either <laughs> but it doesn't belong to me Well, if it ended up here, it's because it didn't belong to anyone anymore. It... <sighs> broken, broken or not, that belongs to York. It might be easier to ask York directly if they want to reclaim it. York, what do you want? I mean, it is mine. Only right I have it. And we don't have to do this the easy way either. Hmm. Please, York, don't... <laughs> I'm well, just saying that if you don't turn it over, you're not going to end up using it. You'll just end up going through my door. Yeah, no, it's just, it's just, and she's going to pull an envelope out of her pocket. Uh, I'm, I'm, you aren't the only one who can read minds, and what she's thinking is, okay, I can't actually read minds, but it doesn't change that I've written, what's written in here is the truth. Uh, and she is going to open up this envelope and read out uh, basically a plan written by at least a version of York for reclaiming the crown and than becoming a harbinger and taking over the world with it. So, and then she's going to put the envelope back. You see why I might be hesitant to hand this over to them. <laughs> uh... She's going to kind of shrug. I guess that depends on whether you think you can trust them or whether you can trust this library. I already said uh, I'm willing to give it to Tuttle if they are willing to promise they won't let it fall into the wrong hands. Even if 
a decide that my hands are also the wrong ones. I think there are plenty of versions of all of us that have plans and don't have plans. I have no current plans. And at the same time, you're asking me to hand over a very intimate part of myself. I have lost a completely fractured part of myself. People can manage fine without limbs, without senses. Does not mean that they are not at a loss. Sybil, please, I broke it in the first place. Mm -hmm. Well, Sybil is going to suddenly appear next to you and hold out the crown to you. Choice is yours. Oh, but before you take this, uh, she is going to take a step sideways. I should probably mention that uh whoever summoned this library of years or this library to that division of years also made it so that if you take the crown out of the library the library is going to implode in on itself and i don't think that would end well for division sorry i just i was a little distracted by all the death threats uh, and uh you know what january 5th she was legitimately distracted by the death threats. She really did forget that part until just now. No. Ah, uh, well, I don't know for sure, but I have my suspicions, she says, looking at D. <laughs> Still mine, and what what use do I have for mortal groups like Division? If they crumble, I'm sure another one will pop up in its place. Employment agreements can be terminated. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Honestly, I don't think that thought ever crossed Tuttle's mind. You're telling me that you haven't seen the rot making its way through this organization. Talking to Tuttle this time. I, yes, I know, I know that they were trying to do, I was there when we all almost, they had things that were specifically built to kill me and you and York, and I'm aware of everything that happened to Bella. I I saw her file. I saw the recordings. I know what they've done. I'm not saying that they're always right. I am saying that I don't I don't want 
to leave this place defenseless. What, what about the rest of the world? What about... There was plenty of world before Division and plenty of world after it. And at the same time, there's only so much time before they try to chain us or use us when they realize they cannot keep controlling us. Yes. But you're here. And I would just as soon or not be. Wait, you're thinking about leaving? Huddle looks legitimately crestfallen. <laughs> There's things I haven't trusted Division with from the start. My employment with them is just another one to add to the list. And you're going to... To what? Go and try to figure out how to become death again on your own? Why not? Uh, you have help here. For the moment, until you get too powerful, and then you have to be stopped. And I'm not sure humans should be the one gauging that. I have an existence outside of this place, much like Dee, and you are far too trusting of what they have to say to you. Oh, what would you like to do? Mm-hmm. Oh! <laughs> oh! Righty. Hmm. Okay, so... Just to clarify, um, yeah, okay, um, yeah, so it can take the crown from Sybil. It can take the crown from Sybil, and it does. Yeah. See, the thing is, you do that, so your puppet is currently in control of this crown. The problem is, there was a little bit of a failsafe worked into the crown, where if it was given up unwillingly, the spell circle was kind of rigged to blow. Oh, Sybil is giving the crown willingly. Okay, but... Sorry, sorry, so like... So I thought this move was like you basically have a puppet you control and that puppet is taking the crown from Sybil. Um, 
Okay, but there is a difference between Sybil holding out the crown to Tuttle and a puppet stealing a crown that is being given to somebody else. Okay, so do you want to... Okay. Okay. Yeah, so Sybil's inner monologue is going to turn right back to, oh crap. Um, so she is going to raise one of those house of card barriers around all of you. Um, and say, you know, this is not how I wanted things to go as the boiler room just completely detonates. Um, I want to power through darkness. I want to raise a barrier around that. She, oh. around the uh around the seal specifically oh, around the seal okay. um i feel like that yeah yeah we can do it as power through darkness i mean it contain. could be unleash the dark i yeah i could see it going either way but if you want to do power th one over the other i'll let you make the call on that could i, I do a really weird thing to assist tuttle in this hmm I don't I, see. I think I'm going to do Unleash the Dark because I think that that makes okay. more sense. I I would love to do one last instance of the Corridor of Doors. Helping Tuttle by calling on the Broken Mother of Oaths and Strength of War and Conquest to empower Tuttle. I was gonna say giving Tuttle more power is uh it's a move. move. It's a move, it's a decision. Let's put okay. it that way. Um, I believe you can only have one harbinger out at once, or am I remembering that wrong? Uh there is not wording that. to that effect. <laughs> Okay, okay, so now you have two harbingers out. I will say oh, that as soon as the spell circle one. detonates, um the the one of stars isn't going to need to protect Tuttle, but it hasn't retreated yet. So you okay. currently have two harbingers at oh. your disposal if you mark the ruin. How about this? I would just redirect because the whole purpose of okay. the uh, twin moons was to redirect the flow of energy back to Tuttle anyway. Right. So that serves the same purpose. Okay. Ready then, Tuttle! I'm gonna put three darkness tokens on this, uh, cause... Okay. Alright. Perfect hit. Um... Yeah, so obviously one of these is going to be probably avoid harm or consequences for containing the explosion. Uh, unleash the dark. Um, get what you want. Okay. Um, and yeah, get what you want and avoid reprisals, harm, or cost. Okay, yeah, so you you are able to contain that explosion, and Sybil from within her own barrier is going to say, wow, you're a quick study. Uh, and then, so to yeah. Extent, there's... I wish that was not true. Uh, and she is going to lower her own barrier and say, well... I suppose since you lot have the crown now, I don't have any further business in this library. Uh, Tuttle, feel free to send a letter if you ever want to talk again. And she is... Oh? Well, she is going to bow, and as she does, a puff of smoke appears, 
and unless any of you have a way to intervene, she is gone by the time the dust settles. <laughs> Do any of you have a way to intervene or want to intervene? Honestly, D is at the point where they know that this monster will end up at their door one way or another. Uh, and, uh, she picked probably a very fortuitous moment because as this is happening, a shudder passes through the library and the pipes are groaning and moving as bookshelves burst through the walls and ceilings and rearrange themselves around you. Right now, all of you are separated from each other, though I suspect January 5th probably has a sense of where the others are. <laughs> and I would like and I, I would also like... do have a sense of where York is due to yeah. Alpha and Omega. That is also true. However, I would like also like all of you to choose one memory the library takes from you as it accelerates feeding on Division's records, including the records about all of you. <laughs> you forget the fifth in your name? <laughs> it doesn't have to be a big memory, just a memory. I mean, I think I've got a pretty easy one. Hmm. The the memory of interacting with the person that we talked about at the beginning. I can't remember their name Ash. now, which seems appropriate. <laughs> oh, yeah, the agent. Yeah. Oh, Marcus. Yeah. <laughs> Just forgot him. Okay, you know what? I think it's with that, it seems especially fitting that where you find yourself is now standing next to a very confused Marcus, walled in on all four sides by bookshelves. And Marcus kind of looks at you and he's like, D, do you know what's going on? Because I was just by the door and then I was here. D just walks away. Uh, so you are okay. So I guess I didn't. Oh, sorry. Well enough, but you are literally boxed in by bookshelves right now. Boxed in by bookshelves. Yeah. I guess D would move to push them over. You can. Uh, and you find yourself once again in the labyrinth of shelves. With the lights flickering ominously around you. I think it would be interesting if Tuttle forgot what the bracelet did. Oh... Puddle forgets that the bracelet is a connection to Sybil. Okay. 
Uh, not the cards, not the letters, but that specific thing. Okay. Uh, I am going to say that you actually stayed where you are. You are still in the boiler room. It's just been very rearranged in terms of layout. And now it's just you next to a no longer existing hole in the ground and a bunch of weird pipes and shelves. You do have a sense of where York is, but that's about all you have to go on right now. I I want to use Alpha and Omega, but I want to try to use it in a very weird way. Uh, normally, you can mark one ruin to have them appear by your side. Um, if I have an idea where York is, do I also have an idea where that crown or broken part of the broken part of the crown? Because I think York has the rest of the crown. If I yeah, remember. Yeah, no. Exactly. So unless January fifth said their puppet gave it to York, it's with January fifth. <gasps> it's with January fifth. If that's the case, I'm going to use the second version of Alpha and Omega, which is Mark One Ruin to change a small but significant aspect of your shared fate to bring it closer to Ruin. If you do, immediately gain one bond with them and one bond with what the darkness demands. I am going to mark one Ruin to fix York's crown so that it was never uh so that it wasn't so that tuttle didn't break it if that's okay with alice of course was that a yes i didn't yes sorry okay no that's fine um then yeah i'm gonna mark one ruin um, and Tuttle is going to hold a hand or hold uh, air hands together, um, slowly becoming less and less human. Um, and the crown is suddenly fixed um and yeah it's it's a it's a uh what if you oh wait a minute <laughs> um and the uh the bond that I'm going to increase actually is um, the bond that I want to increase is to grant a wish to a being related to the apocalypse. I'm going to increase that bond because I don't want to think of another uh, yeah bond with the darkness right now you, you don't have to think of new bonds either way but sure <laughs> uh, i don't need four bonds with the what the darkness demands but yeah um i think mentally uh also because of the way alpha and omega works i think york knows exactly what tuttle did regardless of the fact that technically at this point time and reality were messed with in order to fix it meanwhile york you're aware of this 
but what memory did the library just take from you? I think the library took the memory of the day she made it, uh, York made the arrangement with the vision. All right. Uh, and incidentally, where you find yourself is remember that lecture hall that was filled with echoing whispers of the people who had been reaped by a certain scythe. Yeah, now it's whispering hymns to you. Also, the tables are laid out with all sorts of different chocolates and treats. Uh, there are some recipe books nearby that uh, maybe had something to do with the selection there. Yes. Alice is here for it. York doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so so you actually do basically know where you are right now. It's just where everyone else has gotten to. That's the issue. <laughs> I think York just kind of looks around. If you want to impress me, you'll make it easier for the rest of my group to find their way. Hmm. There's going to be a little bit of a shudder through the library. Uh, and I think all of you will notice that the books on the shelves are rearranging themselves a little. So that there are there's basically a red line of books leading you in a certain direction. However, before that happens, January 5th, you had so few memories to lose, but... Oh. Oh. Oh, man. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh -huh. And where that was, there's a faint sense of something forgotten, but maybe January 5th is used to that by now. <laughs> Meanwhile, you are standing near the exit slash entrance to division with your puppet that is now bearing the whole unbroken crown. All right, well, the puppet, which is holding the crown, is currently fleeing for a portal opening beneath gnarled, twisted roots that you most certainly did not summon. Okay. Okay. So what do you name it? <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> All right, says Michael. 
Michael <laughs> handing you the crown <laughs> and the portal closes. <laughs> All right. Yeah, Michael's like, <laughs> yes, yes, good scratches. <laughs> Nobody's close to hear you, but you can kind of sense where they are. And now the library is making a little line of red books heading in the direction of the orc. So. All right. Michael is going to take your hand and uh, trot alongside you, looking curiously around the library. <laughs> is that what everyone else is doing? Sure. I mean, a bunch of red books just appeared in the boiler room. What else am I going to do? <laughs> <laughs> if... if if the thing, if the library tried to keep Tuttle down here, I feel like there would just be more mass destruction. Yeah, it's not. It's not trying to keep you there just yet. Uh, or at the very least, it's not to keep you from leaving the rooms you're currently in. Hey, D. Uh, as you're going. Marcus is trying to get your attention. Do you pay them any mind? I think the best way to close out this particular part of Dee's story is to oh. correct Dee's mistake from all those years ago. The one they don't even remember making? Correct. <laughs> they are vicious. They are filled with bloodlust from the Reaper Scythe. I can't think of a more appropriate response. Okay. Well, as Marcus is running after you, trying to get your attention, how do you do this? It happens suddenly. It happens so quickly that if it were shot in film, it would just be a flash of light. And then... Marcus's body dropping to the ground. Well, too fast to even flinch or recognize what has happened. Perhaps D notices that as Marcus tumbles to the ground, so does the book he was holding. The one you were looking for. D will pick it up without a stray thought and then continue following the books. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, we're going all in on this, the epilogue plotline, okay. Yes, yes. There is a whisper <laughs> of pages around you as you go forward. And the lights stop flickering, but you do a little bit like you're being watched. The Harbinger doesn't flinch. After all, it knew what you would become. So, all of you arrive in the lecture hall with York. Uh, by the way, in the meantime, the librarian has brought in a bottle of champagne. Not sure if you're interested or not. 
Uh-huh. I imagine January 5th would love a good mulled wine, honestly. <laughs> Uh, uh, so what, how do we, how did points at red books? Oh, well, our, our most esteemed patron, the librarian says, gesturing at York, uh, did all of your presents. It was a very good job. The librarian straightens up and adjusts their bow tie. Just what exactly are you requesting? I don't think I've ever considered destroying this place. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. There are several alternate versions of York that have either attempted or succeeded at destroying Earth. By the way, the librarian is going to hold up a collage of all those <laughs> alternate Yorks with a heart. <laughs> um, <laughs> the equivalent of the librarian's mood board is just York. Alternate Yorks, current Yorks. And I don't think I've considered destroying the world. Doesn't mean it's not in better hands sometimes, but if assistance is all you need, I'm sure they'd be more than happy to help. Uh, anything for our esteemed patron. We technically, um, I think still have to find a way to usher the library on from Division simply because we haven't retrieved some of the information that we really should. I've gotten everything I need personally. Also, quick question, because if I don't ask this, I won't be able to get it out of my head. In all of the alternative versions of York, is at least one of them a Yorkie? <laughs> Alice, what do you think? I mean, if there is every possible universe 
Then there is, of course, the one universe in which everyone is dogs, except for the except for the corgi, in which case the corgi is a human. <laughs> Brilliant. I had to ask her; it would never get out of my brain. Oh, of course. Uh, helping patrons find information is what I'm here for. Uh, just give me a few details and I should be able to assist you. As long as what is mine is restored to me moments do not matter I just fixed that tunnel looks offended mm. don't worry but Divinity does not look good on everyone. You know what? Uh, if no one gives the librarian more specific instructions, the ceiling is going to start rumbling again. No. And some of you might recognize that it's about to dump a whole lot of books on you. No, just, you know what? I, in retrospect, I don't think Division needs that information. Just January 5th's name. One um, book on January 5th's name. All right. In From that... this universe, preferably? The librarian is going to go out. Uh, when they come back in, they look like a different person. Uh, but they are carrying one book about January 5th. Clown, would you like to tell the group what this book is about? Your character, your backstory. <laughs> I mean, I can do it if you want me to. Okay. Okay. Okay, so do you want me to tell you what the book the librarian hands you is? <laughs> okay, so you, you can supply the name of the book. Yep. Uh, and despite the kitschy exterior, the insides turn out to be mostly factual eyewitness accounts and historical records, and a couple myths and oral traditions passed down about the Krampus. <laughs> I almost said it before you just to prove that, but I, I didn't, so. <laughs> Since very close to the introduction. Yeah. Not saying it wasn't good. <laughs> uh... 
I just know too much about folklore. <laughs> yeah, no, that's mood. Uh, Tuttle is going to look over at York and be like, is that at least an adequate apology? I'm not quite sure when you owed me an apology, actually. Well, for breaking it in the first place, for not trying to immediately retrieve it from Sybil when she shouldn't have had it. Um, and I could think of a few more things. I'm sure, if given the time. I would put all of that on the fact that you're still just a little too trusting and a little too new. And hopefully in time, you will grow to understand. I don't know that time is something that I really, I think I have too much time. I think that's your choice to make of it then. Humans, these mortals always talk about time providing lessons and lessons to learn from if you don't feel that you're ever going to go grow from that Tuttle remember that people can be nice and also lie and not everyone is going to have your best interest at heart did you ever Where our interests interline, I did. Where they didn't, I have my own needs and purposes to meet. But if it makes you feel better, I did never lie. Yeah, it does make me feel a little bit better, actually. And you can call me M3. It's fine. I think if people are truly considering leaving, I might look into going home. That is where your plans lie. I wish you luck with that. I still don't see any use in being with Division any longer. There's never really been much for me with their policies. If you're not here, you may still be in danger. From them, specifically. Oh, I never doubted that for a second. Mortals have, since my fall and well before that, seek to control what they are afraid of. And if they cannot control, they will destroy. Sometimes they need someone to stop them from doing that. I think it makes sense to want to control what you're afraid of. It's not always the right thing to do. But at least having an even footing with someone is helpful.
if learning more about getting myself home means staying with division for now, I will do that. If they try to do anything against any of you, I will let you know, one way or another. Again, your choice, M3. And should you need it, I'm sure the library is always at your disposal, though I am considering having it relocate to New York so it is closer. Uh, the second you say New York, the entire library is shuddering. <laughs> uh, New York, you say, says the library. <laughs> okay, well, that might solve the moving the library portion. Um, in the librarian is going to say, by the way, if you don't want to go to New York right now, I recommend leaving by the front entrance. <laughs> that would be probably a good time for me to make my exit. <laughs> be sure to visit, says the librarian to York. <laughs> Again, we'll get you relocated to New York. I'm sure there's very, very nice abandoned places that you can grow in. All right. By the way, um, I'm trying to decide. So it sounded like Tuttle, or sorry, M3 and Alice were having quite the heart to heart there. <laughs> Would either of you like to roll for Reveal Your Heart? Uh, I, it's a little late, but yes, I would. Mm -hmm. Might, might help to know what kind of note the epilogue is going to. Um, can I add darkness tokens to this? I don't think I can. Yes. I can? Okay. We're going to add two darkness tokens to that. Disastrous success. Would you like to modify with bonds or embrace the disaster? Um, actually, since I have one and because I was thinking about doing this anyway, I'm going to use one of my bonds with D, actually, because while we're leaving, Tuttle is also going to look over at D and be like, you're leaving too? It's for the best. Are you sure about that? Indeed I am. Have you ever not known me to be sure of something? Yes, but that doesn't mean that I haven't known you to be wrong. I'll keep that in mind. I care about you, you know. Where? I hope you make it to the end of the universe. <laughs> Just kind of. <laughs> also, when Tuttle said, "I have, I have known you to be wrong," um, they said that specifically loud enough so that York could, in fact, hear that. <laughs> And that's how I'm using the bond to modify it. Alrighty. 
I absolutely adore that I just got to do the equivalent of I love you, I know. <laughs> <laughs> like the friendship version of that. Yeah. The the actual I know when this changes nothing. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So on a success, um, York will have the chance to reciprocate, but Tuttle or MV definitely gets to choose one of the success options for reveal your heart. Oh, that makes me think. I think there is something I do want to ask January, but I've been talking a lot, so I am going to pick something and wait. Um, I'm going to clear a condition. I'm just going to quickly clear Vicious, because that makes sense right now. Yes. I figure maybe walking after we walk out of the library. I don't know if anyone else had something they wanted to do. Not like a full move, but I do think D will think to January. You should enjoy this place. You never know how long it'll be around. Honestly, I think that D's response is just a <laughs> sure thing. So January, are you at least staying or am I going to be making some people very unhappy for a bit? Ah, uh, that seems likely. Although I don't actually think I've had a roommate before because normally they're a little bit too worried about me blowing up the place. <laughs> and they were roommates. <laughs> <laughs> and they were. <laughs> this this series is a precursor to two <laughs> very different television shows and one of them is a buddy sitcom and I'm fine <laughs> with that. Uh, all right. So you've managed to talk your way out of a confrontation with the harbinger who was able to get away but you have the crown York. Uh, you got the information you were after. Marcus perished in the line of duty. Division isn't going to look into that too much further. I feel like the, the, the scene of us dangerous. walking out of the library is just Tuttle asking, wait, where'd Marcus go? <laughs> I actually think, and and bear with me on this, I think 
because Marcus died in the library that it would make sense that the library took all memory of Marcus. Oh. And maybe Tuttle is like, where did that one guy go? <laughs> Wait, where did that where did the guy go that went with us? I don't recall who you're speaking of. <laughs> I think you remember D, but if you wanna <laughs> pretend either. I think that fits. <laughs> you might not remember who, but you certainly remember what. <laughs> All right. Well, as far as division is concerned, case closed. I will say, Sin, as all of you exit and some of your handlers run over for updates and or debriefing, time is going to slow to a standstill and it's just you and one of those handlers is now death you know the death who dethroned you <laughs> who is going to waltz over and take a look at the book you're carrying hmm. so you found what i asked you to a chance to read it yet? <laughs> Not yet. But I will. I think I'm done playing games. I'm coming for you. I just ah. thought it would be best to let you know first. I've always assumed you were after me. Good to know that you're not playing games anymore. Uh, and the current death is going to run a finger over, like, your shirt sleeve. And the fabric is going to decay to dust where he touched it. Just be sure you know what you're going up against. I'd hate you to underestimate me twice. <laughs> I know exactly what I'm up against. It ain't the first time we've danced. Hmm. But it will be the last. Well, best of luck. You're going to need it. Uh, and with that, death will vanish, and it's going to be a very confused-looking handler <laughs> standing next to you as time resumes. I don't think D has any words for the handler. The handler knows better than to press D for details about certain things. <laughs> All right. With that, I think we're entering the epilogue. So it sounds like Tuttle and January 5th are sticking with Division. Yes. Sorry. Tuttle is, yeah, Tuttle is sticking with Division and York may occasionally get mild mental updates if Division seems to be paying too much attention to 
what they are doing. But in particular, Tuttle is looking for... how to go home. Well, the longer you stay with the vision, the closer you're going to get to that. But I will say it's interesting because it seems like a lot of the time whenever you find a new clue, there's some very familiar handwriting in the margins of the book or just a glimpse of somebody familiar rounding the corner from whatever harbinger you took down. You happen to know something about that. <laughs> and if you send a letter, you're, you're always going to get a response. <laughs> I will say... I think one of the things that Tuttle would write is... Do you still want to try to get that wish? The answer you're going to get back is, of course. But from now on, I won't try to force your hand. If you want to help me, I'll let you know how. But if you don't, I'll find my own way of doing things. I think it might be a better idea if I'm the one messing with causality this time. And Tuttle would put a little, would draw a little star at the bottom of the letter uh, and just be like, besides, I'm going to be picking on a death that I don't like very much. Hmm. Well, then I think in the time span that this epilogue covers, you would perhaps also be collaborating with a certain magician who takes a new name every day. <laughs> to bring back her lost lover. Petal doesn't care if it's, you know, not D. Mm. Well, I think if, whether... If it's granting a wish that where D is in death right now, I don't care about that. Mm. Well... Besides, D left. <laughs> Uh, so, York, it sounds like you're striking out on your own. Relatively, of course. I think as York leaves the division hallway, there's a split second where they walk through the door and it's no longer there. Vanish from division. The public notices that they are more often present in the city that they protect. A lot more relevant and the attention's nice. And after all, if you protect something long enough, usually it returns you in kind. It's hard for Division to start messing with you if eyes are everywhere. And York has helped the parasitic library settle into one of those abandoned subway terminals. Legends start popping up, little folk stories about people stumbling upon a library, exploring and never quite being able to remember it afterwards or find it again. I will say the library does come and go sometimes, but it's always there whenever you go looking for it. Which is what matters, and I imagine 
New York and D intersect on occasion. They don't have much of a need for those in division, but death is always useful to make someone look like a hero. I will say division is definitely keeping an eye, def always keeps an eye on people who we, but unless they're making moves to become a full-blown harbinger, they just keep a, they watch from a respectful distance. <laughs> so, uh, D. You mentioned wanting to do a certain something in this epilogue. <laughs> yeah. Uh, basically, D goes after death. And it is a titanic battle. At different times, all seven of the corridors are opened. But the important thing is what D forgot. D forgot that in killing death, they would also break the veil between the living and the dead for at least a time. And in doing so, they will become a harbinger. Whether they cause the apocalypse or not, that's another story. But D retires into Harbingerhood. All right. And with that, I believe we have brought our mini campaign to a close. Thank you, everyone, very much for playing. A uh, couple quick things here. Friday the 1st of March, 8 p.m., Eastern Night returns with storyteller and creator Mark Barron. Saturday the 2nd of March, 8 p.m., is Eastern Masks, the puzzle project returning for season two. Join Knox and company for more exciting adventures. Check out YouTube for more adventures from Nerds with Dice. If you have a story you wish to tell or a game you wish to showcase, our creators app is always open and can be found on Twitter and Blue Sky, or ask for the link in our Discord. And just a reminder, I'm Julia LaFont. Uh, in addition to being the keeper for this campaign, I am a pro game master over on Start Playing Games. Uh, if you do a search for me and or for Apocalypse Keys, you should be able to uh, able to find the Friday Night Apocalypse Keys campaign. I'm trying to get started over there. Uh, so if you if you like how I run things, feel free to check that out. Um, oh, I'm also a creative writer. My WordPress site is jklafondwriter.wordpress.com. Ah, uh, and thank you very much for watching and listening. Uh, would everyone else like to say a little bit more about yourselves before we say goodbye for now? <laughs> well, uh, my name is Alice Hart. Uh, you can find me everywhere online at Alice Hart or Hellion Hart. Um, let's see, depending on what day this comes out. Um, on Saturdays over at Lost Caravan, I am in their direct to YouTube Old Gods of Appalachia campaign called Dark Baptism. We've got a few more episodes of that uh, going live on Saturday nights. Um, March the 3rd, I am actually going to be running a game for Lost Caravan as part of Wild Week. It's a charity week supporting um, 
it's called Rewild. It's a nonprofit organization focused on wildlife conservation. I will be running a little lasers and feelings hack called Decay and Bloom. And then on the 9th, I will be joining another GM to play Monster Care Squad. Um, outside of that, starting on Sundays, March 10th, uh, for a few weeks over on Girls Run These Worlds, I'm going to be playing in a fun little series called All Templars Are Bastards. It is a Dragon Age game. If it's got a lot to go on, we're going to ruin some Templars nights. Definitely a little bit. Um, everything else, please pay attention to social media if you'd like to see more of me, or you can reliably find me on the actual Play Monster of the Week podcast. Welcome to Reddington, where I am a player, editor, and producer. Sin, what are you doing? Hey. Somebody made a decision. <laughs> Hi, I'm Synthetic. You can call me Sin. Uh, if you're looking for me, you can find me over at Blue Sky at Synthetic20. Or on Twitter, if you're still on the dumpster fire, at Asynthetic20. Uh, I am also a TTRPG designer. And I am currently working on my own system, codenamed Queensgate. Uh, that is going swimmingly, and I've got a, a couple of things that I will mention, but I, I will first say the second episode of Queensgate Chronicles using that system is going to be, uh, streaming from the Twitch channel Queensgate Chronicles. Uh, that is on the 4th of March at 8 p.m. Eastern U.S. time. Other things that I am doing in the streaming space, though, I've got a busy couple of weeks coming up. Uh, on the second, I am going to be returning to Masks the Puzzle Project, where I will play a head empty thembo uh, that is just the most delightful character to play because. At the end of last season, they were only like 48 hours old in their brain. It was fantastic. And I can't wait to see what shenanigans that crew gets up to. On the 6th, I'm going to be doing the second episode of Mar Monster Force over on Bardic Inspiration Network using the uh, Power Rangers RPG. Uh, my character is scheduled to have their first panic attack because they are an android that just got access to emotions for the first time. So if you want to see that disaster, uh, show up for that. And then on the 8th, speaking of the charity thing that's going on on Lost Caravan, I am going to be running Dogs in the Bark where I'm going to be retelling the exact story of Fern Gully because... That sounds fun, except with dogs as the central characters. And it's going to be uh, doing Dogs in the Bark, which is a Blades in the Dark hack. Uh, and then the 10th, I'm going to be over on Singularity Roleplay for Fragments of Tomorrow's Apocalypse, uh, where I am playing the Rift of Rapunzel, only Rapunzel. I'm lying. It's going to re be revealed on the next episode what the rift is. So if you want to see that, tune in there. And lastly, I will be on Gay Camp on the 12th over on Singularity Roleplay, in which two people went home because we found a body, but four of us are sticking around. I can't imagine anything bad happening from here. Uh, so if you want to be updated on mm -hmm. all those things or other things, check socials. Uh, moving on to, hey, Clown, tell us what's up. <laughs> um, hi. Uh, I'm Keldry, um, Starless Solid on, uh, the 
uh, bird dumpster fire, and also on Blue Sky um, under the same name, Starless Solid. Uh, I am also an artist, and chances are random pictures of some of the characters that I have met in games like this one might appear on my my Instagram, um, and maybe on my Blue Sky, but mostly on my Instagram, which is Starless Travel. Um, that is probably the one different social. Uh, if you want to find uh, lists of uh, some of the playlists of RPG or TTRPG games that I have been in, um, I have a Publix only Facebook, uh, Kelby Smith, which is basically just the TTRPGs and uh, fan art I do for Book of Travels, because if you haven't checked out Book of Travels, please do. I'm not affiliated with them. It's just really cool indie game that if you like TTRPGs and you like uh, old school sort of uh, TTRPG video games, that is, and folklore, and creepy monsters that scream at you from the fog um, and then try to murder you. Uh, but mostly lovely, happy uh, travel game. Uh, that's... Uh, did a good game to have and i will possibly be streaming that with a friend soon so keep an eye on starless solid probably blue sky maybe the dumpster fire uh who knows um and i will be doing more stuff on nerds with dice and possibly at another location later to be revealed. Uh, well, with that, thank all of you very much for playing with me. It has been fun. <laughs> uh, and thank you, listeners and viewers, once again for tuning in to be entertained by our escapades. <laughs> Bye.